Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience. Today, we're going to be talking about this new earth. It is 2024. Happy 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. And happy New Year to you, Rich. What's going on, Rich? How you doing, brother? What's up, man? Doing good. We're finally here, man. And it's just, I say this every year, and, and, and I, sometimes I can tend to repeat myself, but like, I'm not even fucking playing. It freaks me out how fast time flies. I don't, I don't know if you concur with this. A lot of people in the comments have said that, that they kind of feel the same way. But once the clock struck 2020, time has doubled. And at first, I just kind of thought I was tripping. But <clears throat> I remember from 2020 to 2022, that felt like one year. Yeah. And, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm just tripping. Now, here we are in 2024. It literally feels like 2021 was like last year. Like, I, I can't believe it. I can't wrap my mind around. It's doubled. Like, now, one year, to me, feels like six months felt pre-2020. And, like, I'm not even exaggerating. It's freaking me out, but... Well, and I feel like, you know, this show's about timelines, and we're kind of ready in 2024, so it's like, it's fun to talk about the past, but I feel like it's like, we're fucking here. Yeah. And it feels like it is Zooming, but there's been this kind of, like, pause i felt through the holidays of like we're all really going to go into the year that's going to shift the shift like it's the holy shift yeah and you and i were talking a lot because we let everybody know it was fun doing the tarot and breaking it down but now the awakening experience like it's time to double time mm -hmm. get people to open and test to go into much more specific subjects of where this whole podcast is about yeah yeah and i feel like this is the best place to start because are we going to really manifest paradise or fear? I feel like, you know, that's really where the simple part is, but it gets sometimes more complex. Would you say like, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. And that's where, where, when, when we were doing the tarot, that, that the tarot was a good, um, like initiator, like here's the card. Let's talk about the energy and then let's, let's, branch it out into right. every little area of life where when it all comes down to it what we have to learn how to do is take control of our own energy and our own focus like you were saying earlier so many people are like flipping out right you know and everybody's tripping out about this thing that's on the news and that thing that's on the news the people don't understand that your power doesn't just rest in your ability to focus on something. I try to explain this to my clients all the time. They're always asking me, what should I focus on? What should I focus on? I'm trying to focus on this. I'm trying to focus on this. And, and I always try to invite people to look at it from a little bit of a different perspective. I'm not saying that, that it's not important what you focus on, but with just as much emphasis as you're controlling what you focus on, right. you have to put the same amount of emphasis in what you don't focus on. Yeah. And, and instead of saying, okay, I'm going to focus on this, you have to train yourself to know what to not focus on so that whenever you, you're scrolling social media or whatever, and then you see that low vibrational post about some war that's happening somewhere. You, you, you automatically program your brain to say, click scroll. I'm not looking at that. I'm not focusing on that. Unfollow, unfriend, block, scroll. And, and over a period of time, you're actually like rewriting the neural circuitry in your brain, in your brain, literally to the point to where like me, I haven't seen anything like horribly, horribly negative on social media in a long time. I, I don't know if it's because I'm just subconsciously scrolling past it or what, but but people I, people need to understand. And now is the time. It's it's after 2024. This is going to be the final split, where you're taking the higher timeline or the lower timeline, and your focus and 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 your ability to remove your focus is your superpower. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and maybe part of it's because you've been focused on your life that you love, that you enjoy your family. I mean, the holidays, like I feel like the last couple of weeks, I wasn't focused on where it gets kind of like addicting sometimes, right. Mm -hmm. to, to, to get what's in the news, what's the next story. Yeah. And coming back out of it, it was like, today it was like, Oh God, this explosion happened in Iran. And is it, is it the United States? Is it Israel? Is it all this stuff? And it's like, is it world war three? Right. And I'm like, Whoa, uh, I shouldn't have pushed that news app. 
<laughs> but I also feel kind of to take this on a much more crazy spiritual level. I feel like as we've all been deprogramming, the program's going to do its best to try and make you feel like you can't live without it. Mm-hmm. Almost like a drug, you know, or yeah. like some sort of survival system has kicked into gear here. And and to be honest with you, I feel like that's going to be the big part of like not self-doubting this new vibration. Mm-hmm. Like the, the self-doubt that comes with all of our lives of like wanting to be addicted to chaos mm-hmm. is is a huge part of it. I mean, I was telling you, I was at Christmas, like thanking God so much. Like I was like looking at my daughter and Sophia, like, man, I never, I've never felt like this before where it's all mm-hmm. so beautiful and everything like the true dreams are happening. They're manifesting. And that just doesn't happen in a day. And I think that's where people get, I think, yeah. I think a reminder of 2024 is to keep that hard work. You did a great fucking video on Instagram and on I think you probably did it on Facebook everywhere, but it was like that you double up in life when you fucking keep doing the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like people, even if it like looks like a good outcome in their astrology or their tarot or their Chinese Zodiac year or whatever, they kind of get like, well, I'm just going to guarantee that's going to happen. And, and then I'm not going to maybe do the work. I don't know because you're the one who put that out there. What do you feel? No, I mean, it's, it's, I think one of the biggest People are too hung up on the how and the why. Like, if, if you're going to take a new timeline, like what I was talking about in that video, uh, I, I felt the call to take this new timeline, and I kept knocking on metaphorical doors until this door opened, and I'm like, okay, well, this is the level-up timeline that I'm looking for. The first bit of it's going to suck. It's, it's going to, because... That life that you want to create is going to demand a totally different version of you. And you don't just change into a different person on a cellular level and on a neurological level overnight. When Dr. Joe Dispenza says, everyone wants to create a new personal reality as the same personality, but it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. What he's talking about is literally becoming someone else means you're actually changing the neural circuitry in your own brain. Yeah. You're rewriting new programs in your own psychology. And there's only one way to do that. Going through challenges, obstacles, and struggles. So people think that there's this magic switch they're going to flip yeah. where, you know, if I don't get the desired outcome the way that I want it in the time frame that I want it, then I just give up and quit and it's not working. No. You put yourself in that uncomfortable position, doing that uncomfortable shit, you know, putting yourself in nervous, scary, nerve wracking situations and, and you stay there and it could take six months. It could take a year. I think the longest that I've ever had to go was about a year and a half, almost two years operating on a new psychological program before it became second nature. Like that's what I was talking about in the video, like all this. When I, when I first came here, this was weird <laughs> in this in this environment. It was totally weird. But it's like, okay, well, one of these days, this isn't going to be weird. And it's not. Now it's like second nature, you know? I mean, it's even kind of crazy because we built this set together today. Yeah. And that's kind of like that following the universe. Where you talked also in that video that you did, which everybody should go watch on Facebook or your Instagram. Or did you put it on YouTube? I don't know where you put it on a lot of places. Actually, Facebook I did put it on YouTube, yeah. Is... You had a hunch. That's how we, and I had a hunch about you too, but I feel like that there's the, the, I had a hunch just, I did a big show here on Thursday and I redid this set for that. And then I left it and I was like, I'm not going to put it back together because I just have a hunch that Rich is going to be down to shift the set. Yeah. And you and I instantly were just like, you were the one who said, let's put some couches there. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. All right. Boom. Mm -hmm. It just all fucking shifted. Yeah. And you have to, I think, follow that. And I think that's, more of the work than people realize for you. It might have been weird to be here, but now it's like, oh yeah, now I'm fucking making the set and if I can feel at home. Yeah. But that also, you also mentioned that comfort level is when the universe is like, ah, yeah. ah mm-hmm. I'm going to level up. And I think people are like looking for that like permanent comfortable place yeah. when yeah. really that permanent comfortable place is up leveling constantly yeah. and doing the work. Like it's not a, I, I think, you know, 
I love the teachings of Buddha, but I think the idea of how Buddha just kind of sits there and just kind of fucking rubs his belly. And that's just the only, like, like people think that's a permanent thing of like, that's all you do or something. You know that I'm sorry. That really doesn't look good. If you've watched enough cops episodes. (laughs) Um, So I feel like, you know, we're at a place where this is extreme, but it's extreme good. And I think that's Mm -hmm. where, you know, it's easy to, Say the opposite. There's going to be extreme bad. It's going to be about how we handle it too, because there's no doubt they're going to be throwing so much shit because it's Mm -hmm. survival. It's like cockroaches trying to survive in New York city, rats in New York city trying to survive. And everybody's got a, you know, you could fall for that or you could truly go, you know what? Do I have to be connected into this energy or give into it? Because I do feel like it is very matrixy vibes. Like I feel like they feed off the chaos and that, that separation, that, that, that disruption to people to live a happy life yeah. is literally how they are living and how they're trying to create and manifest through you, the yes. individual and the collective, this shit. You know, it always is, I think, the biggest psyop of like, it's these people doing it. So everybody should start hating these people. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to say that those people might not be good people in there. They, they probably are bad, you know, but it's not about giving them the energy of how bad they are and that they are the cause of all these problems. Mm-hmm. The, the cause of the problem is always how you yourself, you have to start with yourself first. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, if you start with yourself first, boy, oh boy, you can do a lot of good. And, and then the next person that's doing their own shit, that's good. Those are going to be the people that are going to be a frequency match. And, and, and now it's more than just, I think, love. Right. Like, you know, cause that's so much been the focus in our astrology and tarot lives and shit. And that's still going to be there, but it's like collective frequency matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything, everything flows together. Once you, that's why I say, all you have to do really is learn how to manifest one thing and then understanding the, the manifestation process of everything starts falling into place. But what people don't understand is that the most powerful force in this universe is the human emotion system and belief system when the anunnaki created us they created us to be more powerful than them right but they 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 know that they had to take control of our perception so that's the reason why they created because they can't manifest they don't have that emotional and belief system to be able to create and manifest the way that we do so that's why they created us to be that way and then they started controlling our perception and our beliefs so that we can manifest for them. Right. And as soon as people understand that it's bigger than finding your life partner, it's bigger than just making a bunch of money. You know, those two things are just the things that, that we're enslaved by. I mean, you know, if you, if you program humans to believe their number one priority is to be in a relationship and make money and they're never going to be happy unless they do, then you can program humans to spin around in a circle, chasing their tails and, and, and creating their world for them while we're enslaved psychologically. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's, again, just one thing. If, if people could just understand how to do one thing, like manifesting your life partner, like you said, it'll, it'll, it'll get to a point where it's more than just romantic relationships. You're, you're connecting with everybody That's, on a more yeah. genuine level. Because one of the biggest problems in humanity today is people need people. Yeah, they're, they're vibrating at that low, broken, empty, lonely frequency, and they're desperately needing people. The minute humanity stops needing each other, the minute they're going to stop manifesting more need, if that makes sense. Makes complete sense, because really. What what is there when we, we say we need a lot of it's connected to systems that are really empty. It reminds me, of course, I mean, I'll bring that tarot and it reminds me of that seven of cups, that hollow. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? If I buy that at Best Buy, I'll feel better. Yeah. Oh God, look at that person. They're in a great relationship. So let me just mimic that and try and find that on fucking some dating app. Yeah. And how well that people put that kind of like image out of like how that they feel like their desire will be met by kind of you know, there's a lot of manifesting channels out there and they try to do the quick kind of, let's just do the quick kind of shit. And Hey, I'm not, no bad blood with anybody trying to help, but this shit ain't just like one minute shit or like, you know, this isn't like fucking rice a 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? This is not the San Francisco treat. Like, yeah. you know, like, let's see, look what happened there, you know, but that place could totally turn itself around. Any place could yeah. you yourself. I think the whole thing is about believing and turning yourself around. Well, if everybody starts turning themselves around, we need to, we need to be in a collective that's much more focused on each individual turning themselves around Yeah, because that need should be about that desire to turn yourself around to be better frequency match because if the frequency match of each individual is high, then the earth is going to be that timeline. Yeah. But I think that there's this kind of like crazy kind of consensus of like, it's just going to naturally just split the timeline and you'll just, you'll just get there kind of like heaven, like, Oh, that's died. I'm going to go to heaven. Yeah. Right. Like I feel like, you know, you have to be of that same frequency match for heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like oh. it's like like you know what I mean. Like you just don't go to heaven. You know, I, I all dogs oh, no. go to heaven. Well, there's some dogs. You know what I mean. That fucking just <laughs> decide to fucking be a lot more than just your little lap dog. Yeah, you know, and um, and, and that's just hardcore truth. I I feel though that it's a it's a 2024 to me is that holy shift of you see the crack of the timeline. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we still have these years of continuing it. It's not like one moment and it's over, but that one moment does feel so when you see the like reality of it. And I think a lot of it's going to seem chaotic, but it's like, man, that up level is usually a chaotic moment. Yeah. Every up level is a chaotic moment. Yeah. I mean, I, I, every, every time you get off of some crazy chaos, it feels more chaotic when really it's not. Mm -hmm. Like when I got off drugs, I remember that feeling like, oh my God, this is going to be fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. But actually it was like, well, this was a lot more peaceful, mm -hmm. a lot more chill. Mm -hmm. So, so I think there's a lot of kind of stigma around the new timelines and new earth of it being kind of like, I don't know, a little, a little airy fairy instead of like <laughs> really grassroots rooted, like, Hey, a lot of this is this. Where are you matching your frequency with? Where are you putting your energy in your day-to-day -day morning? And I think a lot of it at the same time too is, is people, like you had brought up their needs. If your needs are the, the needs of like what feed the old earth, yeah. which I don't know, what do you think some of those needs might be like in your well, I mean, it, it, vibe? It, it all maybe. boils down to this. There's a, a few points there that I kind of want to touch on that, 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 Yes, timelines are splitting. Yes. But no, you, you're not just going to automatically go to the higher timeline unless you reprogram your frequency. And that, go, that, that, that goes to when you were saying, like, everybody wants the quick fix. You can manifest something quick. You can temporarily hold a vibration long enough to manifest something into your reality. But if you don't hold that vibration long enough for it to actually reprogram you on a vibrational mm. level, then see, it's like when people manifest something like winning the lottery, they're, they're, they slip into that, that zero gravity state and equalize that frequency at the right moment. And then you dump $10 million on somebody. And then what happens? They end up taking that money and manifesting more financial stress and debt than they could possibly imagine because they didn't reprogram their frequency. They didn't reprogram themselves to actually be on a frequency to attract abundance. So you, you yeah. dump that, that money on somebody that's not reprogrammed, you know, they just held that vibration temporarily. And, and it's like, like fitness, for example, you know, eight week abs, you know, and then you can, you can <laughs> you, these hardcore fucking little exercise routines where you can get a shredded six pack in like eight weeks and that's cool, right but you're not reprogramming your mind on a on a, a a psychological level so then what happens they get the eight week abs and then bam they gain it all back you know and and it's it's actually about reprogramming who you are on a cellular level on a psychological level on a neurological level so that you are actually a different version of yourself because no, you're not just going to magically get to heaven. I learned that first firsthand when I fucking killed myself at one time. Yeah, it was successful. I had to be revived from death. I didn't see the white light. I didn't see. You saw a bunch of fucking creepy ass fucking <laughs> spirits and shit and yeah, weird was, shit, right? I was in the lower astral realm where ghosts and shit hang out. Just like one, I could see through the veil into the third dimension. 
Like I was just one little density over from this one, just right on the other side of it, which is the lowest of the low that you can get on the other side. I didn't see the fucking white light because my vibration was so fucking low. I wasn't even a frequency match, you know? You were also drinking a shit ton then yeah. too, right? Yeah. Like I was I was at such a low vibrational state that alcohol raised my frequency. That's how low Or the illusion of the the illusion of it raising your frequency. Well, when I when I right? was drunk, like I could actually wake up first thing in the morning and I would keep a hot 40 of natural ice next to my head. Natty ice. Natty ice. A 40 of it. Has to be warm so I can chug it real fast. <laughs> yeah. And that would that was my morning <laughs> coffee. I'd wake up, pound me a 40 real quick. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm awake. I'm ready to go fucking. It like it hyped me up like coffee. It like when I would drink, it would raise my frequency. My vibration was lower than the vibration of alcohol. That's how low vibe I was back then. So yeah, I was definitely not in a vibrational state to see the white light when I fucking crossed over. <laughs> I, I was going to say, it reminds me of like, I just, you know, Christmas and the whole like idea of like Scrooge and seeing the ghost of Christmas past, but I was thinking of the Mickey one and like how Goofy's like, like what, you know, like it's like, you're just like, what about Richmond Lop? Like in New Orleans, like in, in between some fucking wall, like in some basement, like down in the South, you know, mm -hmm. like fucking, I don't think people want to end up on that fucking timeline. I don't think you no. definitely don't want to fucking end up on that timeline, no. but that's the interesting part is like, there's so many timelines. There's timelines that you could be like in between. Are you really dead? Are you not dead? Like yours? Like you were out. Yeah, I was gone. And there's people reviving you in the physical. Yeah. And then fucking you get another chance. Mm -hmm. People, I think, forget about it. I think they, they kind of get narrow minded as the timeline is just like new earth or bad earth only. There mm -hmm. could be fucking so many different versions of the new fucking earth. Oh, yeah. That we all get to create together. Some we're creating in our own way that that matches in a frequency with like all these different complex things. And then at the same time, I feel like with any kind of end, you know, you know, there's going to be that kind of like feeling of Holy shit. It looks like it's all coming down. Like, I mean, if I look at Las Vegas and I look at all the old, you know, fifties Vegas, or you watch the movie casino and shit and you just see all the fucking, Bump, that fucking hotel's gone, and then they put up a new one, and, da, 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 and now Vegas is a whole different vibe than it was 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even recognize the place. You wouldn't even feel the same. The mob used to control it, you know? It's just a different kind of mob now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, there's, there's a different vibe to it. Like, uh, you know, going to a pool back in the 50s was like, okay, you just smoke some cigarettes, you had your wife, you went to the pool, and you just jumped in the pool and kind of talked to people. Now there's, like, fucking DJs and fucking everything in between. So I feel like, you know, we watch new timelines in our own life happen all the time. And I think that this is a, a different version when it's, when it's a collective timeline shift. And I think that's, what's been making people, I think so fearful, which they need to get out of that fear is like one, most of the stuff that people are afraid of right now, most of us all don't want that shit to happen mm -hmm. or don't agree with the shit that's being pushed. Anything that's being pushed so yeah. if somebody's trying to push somebody to man to have you manifest, we're pretty well built as souls and human beings to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to manifest that. If somebody's telling me to go to someplace I don't want to go, I'm going to be like, no, fuck you. I don't, I don't feel like going. But I think that you have to be confident enough because I, I feel like this whole timeline shift and 2024 is about a confidence level of being like, no, I, I don't feel like going into your reality. That what looks like a collective is the illusion. We see that in the media and social media now, like these false movements that they pay influencers. They use AI bot. Yeah. They, use, they, 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 they are the biggest fucking, they, I mean, they make fun of us for being tarot and astrologers as snake oil salesmen. The biggest snake, the real snake oil salesmen are the fucking media mm -hmm. and the fucking social media companies that create these fucking like movements that they pay these one influencer that fucking sells himself out. And then creates this illusion of a movement. And then, you know, you see some people go to it. And those are usually people that are empty and lost. And they feel like, oh, I can attach to this. Yeah. And then they get totally burned. And we've seen it already. So I feel like it's just going to come like way more massive. Like, I feel like yeah. they've set all their fucking little puzzle pieces up. And they feel like, okay, this will be our great moment this year to be like, you know what? We're going to get those people who just still 
love to find that new thing to get really attached to yeah. that feels like a need. They might not look at it like it's a need, but we're going to make them feel like they need us to keep delivering them the fear. Yeah. And we need them to keep, we, they need us to keep delivering them to feel like they're part of something, even if it's catastrophe. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of worrying me a little bit too, <laughs> because, and, and I kind of, it almost feels like another, this is like 2022.0 basically. Back in 2019, I thought it was common sense that they were going to pull something crazy in 2020. I right. just assumed that everybody had common sense. So it threw me when everybody flipped out when they flipped the world upside down. Now here I am, and I still got all these clients coming to me asking, oh, you know, is everything going to improve in 2020? Was this and that? And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You saw what they did last election year, didn't you? You think they're done? You seriously think? that this election year is going to be smooth. Like, like uh, people like forgot. So many people completely forgot that prior to 2020, they, they, they spent the last four years doing nothing but bitching about the president. Right. And that particular president was going to run again in 2020. Duh. Of course they're going to pull something crazy. Yeah. Well, that same president is running again this year. Duh. Of course they're going to flip the world upside down again. And it just seems like people have forgotten that what they did just four years ago. And they think this year is going to be different. It's got me a little bit worried again, honestly. I feel like, again, I'm going through like a repeat cycle of, oh my God, man. Whatever, whatever fucking rabbit they pull out of the hat, whether it's a new variant of the virus or, you know, what, whatever, alien invasion, fucking whatever the, they pull. Are people really going to be surprised again? It's got, I'm a little bit worried. About I mean, it, I mean, I, I think you bring up a good point. Like the election thing to me is like, oh, you know, that president won't be on the ballot. I already knew that's not going to be the case, right? This is more of like, get the people who hate Trump to feel like we got him again. Cause mm-hmm. if you, if you notice over the last fuck, it's like coming up 2024, 2016, eight years, how much they hate Trump, right? And they always get, whether it's the Mueller report in 2018 and the 19, two impeachments, January 6th, fucking mm. the indictment about his house, Mar-a-Lago. Like, they, they, you can just keep going on and they're like, we got him. No, yeah. we don't. No, we don't. Right. Oh, he's not going to be on the belt. Oh, wait, he is. Right. Like, like, so that pisses them off more. Yeah. But then the same's happening on the other side. Like Joe Biden, look at this fucking old guy. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And then, oh, we're going to impeach him Biden now. And then guess what's going to happen? Or the Epstein list right now. It was supposed to come out today and everybody's fucking like, I looked on Twitter. I hadn't been on in a minute. It's all people are doing on X is like, any second, any second, any <laughs> second, any second. Oh, some names aren't going to be on until January 22nd now. You know, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So yeah. it's like, they just, they just love fucking baiting you with all this fucking shit and then making you all upset yeah. and then putting all your energy and giving all the energy to the, a, a person that we don't even know if they're dead, if they're alive, if they're fucking Epstein and all that shit. Who, which person is it? Who is it? And then these lists that come out mm-hmm. and then, and then. I don't know if the fucking list and then, you know, and it, it's like making people like create that timeline that everything is horrible 24 mm-hmm. seven. When I already know that's not for sure true. When I'm like, well, I fucking experienced a beautiful life. Having a child is like a beautiful experience. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, doing this with you is fucking awesome. Having a, uh, doing the work that I'm sure you resonate same, just doing your own work mm-hmm. and doing the work is a fucking beautiful experience. Yeah. So, there's too many good things too. This is not a fucking nonstop reality of hell. Yeah. And I think that people have kind of bought into that, especially since I love that you called it 2022.0, yeah. which really, if you think about it, you know, it kind of technically astrologically is um, really? because it's bringing all that stuff from 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 into this fucking like, all the outer planets are at the end of their signs, the three outer planets. So it feels like quote unquote end times. Mm. And so it's, but it's going to be bringing all the shit that's been really deeply suppressed into some, you know, some of it is going to get 
here you go to the collective here. Here's the real info. And, and how is the collective going to deal with it? It reminds me of mobs, like in castle days, like fuck the king and fucking people are trying to bash the fucking castles. You know, like I feel like, you know, people are really going to take some stuff and, and, and it's like, is it a surprise anymore? Like, I mean, I already know, like there's a bunch of these crazy pedophiles. Like, do I, okay. Like, like, am I going to lose my shit when I've already lost my shit over it again? Like, or am I going to put my energy into creating something good and make sure that that shit's not around instead of like just freaking out about something Yeah. or, you know, we definitely don't want to be putting anger out there and, and, and rage. Cause then that's going to be fucking the world. I really don't want to live in a Mad Max world with everybody's fucking fighting over fucking a little bit of gasoline and a fucking match and a fucking piece one matchstick left. Yeah. That, that doesn't seem that really fun to me. I don't know if it is for you, but <laughs> no, you know, no, no, like, it's, it's, it, again, it, it goes back to what I was saying a minute ago about your focus. I tell everybody that the relationship you have with the universe is what's going to determine whether or not you have a good 2024 or a bad one. Look back again. I always point everybody back to 2020. Yeah. Some people had an amazing year. Some people had a horrendous year. I look back and at the time, at that point in my life, I, I doubled my annual income that year. My family floated through. We fucking, the universe picked us up and carried us comfortably through all that bullshit. You know, not everybody got to experience that. Some people, it was a catastrophe. They lost everything, you know? And, it, and it, now we're coming up to another time where it's going to be a repeat. And, and the relationship you have with the universe and your ability to control your fucking focus. Whenever the internet starts telling you, be mad about this thing, or, you know, white cop killed a black man, or, or whatever, whatever, you know, you say, I'm not focusing on that. Click, turn it off. And your ability to do that, no matter what's going on out here, is, is going to determine whether or not the universe picks you up and carries you through it, or you drown in it. Because another thing that I learned in Mind Mastery School, I use this a lot, is that the universe behaves like water. Whenever you're making your way through life, the universe and your life experience behaves like water. It lifts those up who make themselves light and drowns those who make themselves heavy. If you think about it, if you put your hand in the water and you move it easily and effortlessly, there's very little to no resistance. But the more of a fight you put up against the water, the more resistance the water puts up. So when we're going through times like these, the more resistance you put up and the more fear and, and those heavy, dense, low frequencies, then you're going to sink to the bottom. But the people who just... Relax, chill. I trust the universe. This is out of my control. There's nothing I can do about it right now. So I'm all good. All the banks crash. I have no money in the bank. Ah, fuck it, whatever. The universe got me somehow. I don't know how. And that's the thing about this. Like those of us who are trying to guide people through this shit, I don't have it all figured out. I got a fucking lockbox full of gold and silver, and that's about all I got. Beyond that, I don't know. All I know is no matter what happens, even if we wake up tomorrow and everything crashes and burns, somehow, some way, the universe is going to pick me up and carry me through it. I mean, because it's happened all through history. I mean, as an astrologer, I'm trying to show people like whether you take 1933 and the six day bank fucking closure, right? There, you know, companies were smart. Like, hey, I'm, I'm writing an IOU out that you can pay me back in three months. So the train companies did, toothpaste companies at the drugstores. They were like, here, here's an IOU that you can give us, right? So there's always a way, or if I think of the old Roman times where they were biting coins and bit bits of coin. It's so funny. That's where they get the idea of Bitcoin uh, yeah. to try and make new coins off of that because they were running out of fucking currency and gold and silver and <laughs> copper and all that shit. There's always something that fucking we as a collective have to fucking find a way. I think that's going to be the biggest part with Pluto coming into Aquarius for sure, by the end of 2024, I mean, most of it is going to be there starting January 20th. But we, during the election, is going to be back to that old Capricorn, that old fucking 16 year old crazy where we've exposed and seen so much of the crazy shit. And Capricorn deals with time. That in many ways, this election, and you know, this is also the first year where the most elections in the, around the world are taking place at the same year. Hmm. It's like over 50% of the world is going through elections. Oh, shit. Right. So it's not just an American thing. It's a wow. fucking worldwide thing. So that's another sign about yeah, the new yeah. earth. If you think about it. Yeah. But it's like 
the universe is going to give us this moment where we can actually see, I think, I think the biggest blow, mind blow and we have to stay with it is things are going to go better than people think. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's going to be that fucking, Oh, you want it. You want, it's like that toxic relationship coming back and knocking on your door. Fucking, Hey, Hey, I'm back to cause your fucking life. Hell. <laughs> and if you're going to answer that fucking door, Good luck because you've already been through that toxic relationship with that fucking old timeline mm -hmm. enough. And this is where you have to say no. No matter how enticing a toxic relationship can be, they never fucking, they get worse over time. They get worse, they get worse. And, and we're at that where we have to just keep that door fucking shut the same way you're talking about with social media or stories or, you know, why follow channels that literally fucking are just pushing fucking like, um, especially these activism things, you know, it's mm -hmm. like they, they really are just doing it to rile you up. And, and you always have to yeah. do your investigation. Like who's backing these people? Yeah. A lot of it we keep seeing are fucking government funded. Really? Yeah. Or private equity that fucking is all about certain fucking agendas. So I, I feel like, you know, we, people have to really, I think, realize like where this collective is going. Like Pluto becomes extreme, obsessive. And I think that the obsession, obsession over status, Capricorn, look at social media since the iPhone came out in 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn. Your status is the status of a human being that you are and the integrity that you have. Mm -hmm. Not how many followers you have. Not, oh, I'm the best in the community at this. Mm -hmm. If anything, that's what's made us to where people barely know their neighbors anymore. You know? It's like, let me be in my house and try and look like I'm the best person on the block. That's what everybody's trying to do. Mm -hmm. That's not what's actually behind every door. Yeah. And, and I feel like, you know, that's what Pluto and Aquarius does is go, well, you can be obsessed with your fucking phone all you want, but that ain't going to fucking make you feel like you're getting any emotion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause actually it feels like you're getting driven emotionally or you're getting some sort of emotional, you know, power from all this but you're not you're really yeah. just you're really kind of like living in kind of like a dead zone yeah yeah and and i feel that's i think the hard part is people have to get out of that dead zone and a lot of it is going to be social like can people be social i think that's that you know part of a new timeline means that we're all going together and we're going to have to help each other in a new timeline it's the you got to think of like kind of practicality like if you're going to go to like, let's say if there was some sort of new land and we were all going to go live there. Well, if you were just going to go by yourself and be like, well, I'm going to go over here and build this by myself. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry to say it's probably going to look like swap, <laughs> you know, or it's going to look like fucking, you know, like there's Eskimos that build nights or shit, you know? Yeah. So, you know, we have to work together. And I think that the social aspect and especially the way that they've done this over this, it's not just been COVID in 2020. It's been the phone. Yeah. The phone has taken people, people over. And that's what's weird because as an astrologer, you would think, well, Pluto and Capricorn was the iPhone. Like th that thing has taken all of our data, our metadata. Mm -hmm. And so they know how to use all these quantum computer systems and shit to fucking it's, it's the algorithms have learned to be your worst enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to realize that, you know, have you noticed that, if you look, if you look back, you know, from right around the time that things like YouTube and whatnot started becoming popular, it, it well nowadays they're pushing things onto people to try to entice everyone into becoming internet famous. Yeah, get more followers, reach more people, get more followers, so you have a huge contingent of the population desperately trying to be internet famous for no reason like i think that that that's one of the biggest things that's being pushed on people right now through this phone get more followers reach more people like they think that's gonna improve their life somehow i got i got news for you it's not that special <laughs> no <laughs> being popular on the internet isn't that special it's not i mean don't get it twisted it's it's nice to be able to you know make a living doing something right on your own terms but other than that having a bunch of people know your name isn't that special it's not gonna leave you feeling good about yourself you know well and i hate to be the bearer of bad news to people too but it's been around forever like i mean every business like 
for Henry Ford, right? Like fucking failed a bunch of times, but God, how many fucking Fords are there on the road? You know, like everybody, like, like nobody goes, did you see how many followers Ford company has? Nobody cares about that. <laughs> yeah. That's what business is. That's going back every thousands of years. Just okay. Like, well, there's a guy who knows how to make fucking badass fucking, you know, ironworks. He's a blacksmith in the corner of town. Oh, he's kind of popular because he does his work good. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's hanging up on the wall and being like, I had another follower today. Fucking. And then going outside and going, dang, 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 dang. Yeah. Fucking making new numbers. Like I had 400, like, you know, McDonald's, right? It's like, did they keep putting 500 billion served? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, is there 500 billion people? I don't think so. You know, but I guess yeah. that's every hamburger. And how do you calculate <laughs> that? And that's more of an, a guesstimate. It's not like a yeah. exact, they stopped doing that shit though. You know, it kind of mm. got to a place where it's like, are you, are you really putting up how many people eat the fucking thing? <laughs> but I feel like that's where people, you're right. Like I get messages all the time. Like, Grow your social media for only four grand. We'll give you 15,000 new subs. How? I don't Fake I, followers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, it's like, or, or even on LinkedIn, it's just like, yeah, you want to, you want to learn how to do this more. I can, I could do this for you and you won't have to ever worry about it. It's always like, you won't ever have to worry. Yeah. Your business will be handled. I'm like, are you fucking kidding don't me right now? Work. <laughs> I always tell all the LinkedIn people that write me on LinkedIn, but they're all, most of those are spam. I always say like, you have no idea what even my business is. You, you, you obviously don't because the things I'll say in there have nothing to do with what I do. Mm -hmm. Nothing like, Oh yeah. Like we'll set you up with Salesforce. Salesforce. <laughs> what do I need Salesforce for? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it, it's, it's, there's just so many different things now that, that are being pushed on people to, to lead them down these, these paths of addiction. Yes. And, and like, like we said a minute ago, the planet is, is moving into a different dimension. <clears throat> That's the, that started happening back near World War II when the first wave of star seeds came in. We yep. started helping raise the frequencies of the planet. So I firmly believe that 2020 and 2021 were the first wall of the hurricane. 22 and 23 were the eye of the hurricane. And I seriously firmly believe, I don't know if you want to go down this rabbit hole just yet, but what we were talking about earlier, the split's coming. The final I, I have no split. I, I, just want to say, I have no problem going down the rabbit hole on the this show. The final split's coming. <laughs> it's going to split off. And that's going to have to manifest itself one way or another. A lot of people going to drop off of, of the timeline. Yeah, and I think that's what's weird about drop-offs, right? I mean, as an astrologer, every time Pluto ingresses into Aquarius, we see a population decline. But I also think of, like, to make it maybe more easier for people to digest, is like, what happened to all these ancient cultures? Like, where did all the fucking ancient Egyptians, like, go? It's, you know, they're just mummies left. Like, what happened to the ancient Mayan culture? Like, there's something about civilizations that just, like, disappear. But are they still running in another timeline? And we're just seeing the relics mm -hmm. when we hear relic, like, is it just a relic of an old timeline? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that we have to kind of look at it like that. And, and, you know, you know, it, it's weird because I know there's so many things that are, are difficult to swallow. And I think that's the hardest part for people. And maybe that's where we could go down this rabbit hole, but also with a way to help people is like, there are some fucking hardcore truths about the shit happening right now that, you know, you just can't ignore. And it's like, well, what do you do about it and still stay positive mm -hmm. and still make people feel positive? I mean, it's, it's difficult because I, you know, and I don't think that there is a, uh, there's definitely not a handbook on this one. There's definitely not a, here you go again, handle it like yeah. this. And that's how, you know, we're at such a different place because you know, we've always seen like, oh God, humanity could, you know, could suffer from this or could suffer from that, you know, like climate change, for example, they were telling us that when you and I were kids, mm -hmm. and then it's like, oh, yeah. okay, we were supposed to be like dead right now. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, it's like all this shit, ozone layer, you know, yeah. fucking like back, like all, so all these things, yet when it's happening in front of our face, it's the first time in, I would say, recorded history that 
there's just no talk about it or people are too afraid to talk about it. And, and I think that's where it gets to me, if I were to be afraid and I don't want to manifest it, because, but I don't feel like I'm manifesting it. I feel like I'm more reacting to it. Like, it's like, what the fuck? Like people just want to stay silent. Like they just want to watch. I mean, you know, like I'll just, we'll just take part of the rabbit hole. Like why have so many people been dying in the eye of the storm that you're saying 2022 mm -hmm. and 2023, more than 21 and 20. Mm -hmm. 20 and 21 when we were supposedly supposed to be on lockdown and everything. And now everything's been good supposedly, mm -hmm. but more excess deaths than ever. Yeah. Now, wherever you want to attribute it to that's, that's one of those things where it's like, they don't fucking talk about it. Yeah. Really? Like, Oh yeah. The, the numbers are just way higher than ever recorded <laughs> in every country especially Western countries, right? Like, oh yeah, no big deal. Just normal. But, you know, a couple of people get sick and the whole, remember they counted the yeah. first person sick in 2020, like in Washington, <laughs> right? Like, oh yeah. my God, a person sick. Yeah. Now it's like, well, yeah, we're 30% over excess deaths than normal. And none of them are COVID related. When they say that, it's like, well, what are they related to? Well, you don't want to look at that. Uh, you don't yeah. want, don't look at that info. Yeah. And I think that's, what's hard. I think that there's a whole, the biggest elephant in the room of all time. And everybody's like, you can just keep getting closer with your big ass and sit on my fucking face, I guess. I mean, if you think about it, well, yeah, the excess deaths have been up like big time. And they're going to keep going up. But but if, if we want to go ahead and just punch straight to the point of what we're talking about, there's two kinds of people. People who took the shot and people who did not. Period. So what's the difference between the people who did and the people who did not? The people who did not are awake. They're not, they're not easily manipulated and brainwashed or as easily manipulated and brainwashed as some others. So when it all comes down to it, and this works, it's magic, and the shift is done, on our timeline, there's only going to be one kind of people left, the people who are awake, and that's it. So, so you know, now, now not to say that, <clears throat> that it, it'll be absolutely impossible for somebody who was, like, coerced into it or for whatever to, to maybe reverse some things. I mean, I, I guess it's if you get in there and you really start doing the energy work and you start manifesting the people into your life that you need who can provide you with solutions, I don't ever want to say anything is impossible. But for the very most part, that's, that's what we're talking about here. You know, there's people who got the shot and people who did not. And over the next few years, a lot of them are going to drop off. A lot of them. Well, and I think, you know, we could look at the physicality of that. But to me, I look at it as fear, right? Because that's the main driver, right? It's like people, people got it because they were afraid. Yeah. Right. Like, cause you know, like, I'll be honest with you, like fucking, uh, coyote star astrology. I've had her on here a lot. Her and I were laughing about it in 2020. Cause it was like, I was a raver. So like, I was like, man, we used to just like eat ecstasy pills off the fucking ground with like in, in a fucking with 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Like there's fucking, who knows what's on the ground, eat the pill off the ground, be around people. And just like, you know, like, you know, like I feel like I've stared death in the face so many times in my life that I'm just kind of like, well, I mean, if like, if I'm going to die off getting sick, I mean, fucking, then I, I guess I die. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it comes down to a fear thing. And, and so it's like, it, I think if people can be like, you know what, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I feel like that that's where the, the soul drives so much harder than the physical and that anybody can shift a timeline. But I think that it, it becomes kind of like a tattoo, right? Like a tattoo yeah. that you, that I feel a lot of people don't want to have and tattoo removal is difficult, but it's not impossible. Yeah. And I think it's that work. Cause it's like, it's not like you go to a tattoo removal artist and go, Hey, take off my tattoo. It's like, okay. Well, you're going to have to come in multiple times for mm -hmm. that one tattoo. Even though that tattoo only took one time to put on probably. Yeah. Maybe two, if it's a really fucking badass one. 
the removal is like five to 10 times. It's like, you're going to have to it's like hair removal, same mm-hmm. shit. And it's like, I feel like if people are willing to be like, you know what? I'm not afraid in my life. I'm going to be, you know, awake now to things. I, I feel that those people are going to be okay. Yeah. I don't know why. I just feel like that we live in a universe where God, because I mean, like I did every drug under the sun, literally so many times that I'm not, I don't know how I'm fucking here. Supposedly from all those fucking commercials when I was young, they're like, you do ecstasy. This is your brain on ecstasy. And they crack an <laughs> egg, remember, and put that on the fucking frying pan. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I guess I fried my brain so many times and I'm still here. It still fucking works. So, you know, I, be- I, I believe in the power of spirit and, and I believe in the power of God. So I, I do, I do believe that people are out of the fear though, because I think that's the biggest problem is the fear because people I feel like dropping off are people in fear mm-hmm. because I don't feel like the timeline, the timeline of fear is dropping off to a timeline of, okay, you get what you asked for. You're afraid to die. Okay. You're going to die. It's like when you're afraid of losing money, guess what happens? You fucking always lose money. Mm-hmm. You're afraid of losing your relationship. You're going to lose the relationship. I feel like we're at that point now in the timeline system and in all of spirituality where it's like, you kind of have to laugh with it. Like if I'm just going to be worried about, I'm going to lose everything. You're going to lose it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a little laugh with it. Like, and we'll pick you back up. But I think what's really weird is mixing this. Cause we're going down a rabbit hole, mixing this with the religious thing. That's been, put into a place it never has been in the last 2000 years where it's like, uh Oh, is the whole stories of where I thought I was supposed to go? Not there anymore. That means where do I go? And that to me kind of feels like a conveyor belt. We all end up on the conveyor belt. Sometime we're all going to physically pass away. And that doesn't mean our soul does, but where we go is the big question now. It, it's especially for more mainstream religious people, right? With all the stuff with human origins being fucking discovered right now from Egypt that they haven't re- announced yet. They found fucking biggest fucking scrolls of book of the dead ever. Of course they're not releasing it yet. Cause I'm sure there's stuff in there that takes all these systems like into what the fuck. But I think that there's like these overlays. Like when you talk about it being a hurricane, I feel like that eye of the hurricane has been every conundrum and weird situation of humanity all at the same time coming into this fucking divergence of where it's all going to just be like oil and water and trying to mix it all together. Mm -hmm. And that creates a fear for people. And so whether it's about shot or not shot, it goes even, I think, into another level of like, if you're going to be afraid of like what the future is, the world, if you're so afraid of the climate or if you're yeah. so afraid of like the earth is always fucking changing. You don't know when there's going to be an earthquake. You don't know when there's going to be this. You don't know when, it, you know, I fucking thought today was going to not rain. I almost took the Shelby out. I haven't taken it out for fucking months. Good thing I didn't, but you know, like, I'm sorry, but that's always, that's the natural part of life. But I think that we're at holy shit moment here. And I think fear is going to be that main driver to the timeline you don't want to end up. And that's where I think the best way to describe it is what you're talking about is like, there's going to be a drop off and it's people and, and the drop off is if you, if, whatever you're afraid of, you're going to get mm-hmm. the same way that, you know, war is manifesting as the fears, fear of, I don't want this person to come in. I don't want this, this situation to happen. I don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen. Guess what? It's the more the collective does that, oh, that's exactly what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's like, how, you know, how do we get people to, to not be so afraid? The same way that, let's say, I mean, we, I think that the, using the, the shot analogy is a good one because it's like, why was there so small a percentage of the people around the world that weren't afraid of dying? <laughs> it's not about taking the shot or not. It's as simple to me as weren't afraid of dying. Well, yeah, yeah. That's really what it is. Cause everybody I know I'm unvaxxed. Anybody I know I'm vaxxed. It's like, bring it on motherfucker. I know I would go around people that had COVID. I didn't give a fuck. I'm not like, Oh my God, somebody has COVID. I just be like, Oh, well, 
I, I Whatever. Think, I think a lot of us, I don't know, me personally, I, I it wasn't a fear of death. It was I'm not afraid of getting sick. Right. I mean, because I caught COVID um, in March. Fucking knocked the shit out of me. But then a couple weeks, got over it, I'm good. I don't go to the hospital over getting sick. I don't go to the doctor because I'm sick. You know, I mean, I was raised by a nurse. My grandma was a nurse. You get sick, lay on the couch, eat chicken soup, sweat it out, take Tylenol, and let your body do what it's got to do. So that's just the way I grew up. She she was a nurse. And, and she was even like, no, we don't need to go to the hospital. We'll take care of this here. So I was just kind of raised to where, like, unless it's like a serious fucking problem, like, you have a bike wreck and you snap your arm and your bone's sticking out, you know, unless it's something serious, chill out at the house. So, like, to me, I'm just, okay, there's a virus. Whoopie doo. I don't care. I'm not, okay, my, my body knows how to fight it, you know? So, like, you're right, though. It's, it is it is a fear thing. I don't understand how they can get so many people so afraid of being sick. I don't know. Or, I mean, there's people that are that always will say, well, like, I was going to lose my job. Well, I, then if you're so afraid of losing your job. Yeah, yeah. What would have happened if you would have lost it? Where would you, where was the universe trying to get you to go? Like, I, like I lost my job in 2008. No matter how hard we tried to stay alive, the fucking recession was so bad for cars. Mm-hmm. My dad lost the dealership. I lost my job. We all lost our jobs. My dad had to go fucking in bankruptcy and fight fucking all these court battles just to fucking even have a life again four years later. It took four years to get out of that shit. He had to go move back in with my grandma in his fucking 50s. Talk about humiliation. But my dad fucking wasn't afraid. It was just like, that's the way it is. And it turned him to finally go to start making his music. But he went and recorded his album and then he got back on track and fucking had better jobs than he ever did. So it's like yeah. the universe does things for a reason. So if, if, if something comes and it's like, oh God, they're going to take that away from me. It's like fucking, yeah. you know, but I mean, I mean, the only thing that shouldn't be taken away is like your soul. And they never try to take away anybody's soul. All they did was try and make you submit yourself to take away your soul. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I volunteer to submit and give my soul away to you mm-hmm. and my fear to you. And, and I think that's the whole thing is like the idea of like what's now where we're at is, boy, they're going to try the next one. Mm-hmm. If they come on TV and try to tell me that, turn your lights off, do not look in a mirror. <laughs> because you could see a weird alien being that's going to suck your soul. I'm going to, you know, oh, don't go outside. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to look in a fucking mirror yeah. and I'm going to see if it's there. I'm a curious motherfucker. Yeah. Right. Like, and I remember that was one thing about being unvaxxed and being, you know, we were tortured. We had Jimmy Kimmel telling us fucking, we shouldn't, we should all die. If we go to the, if we go to the hospital unvaxxed mm-hmm. and we, and we're, if we, we need surgery. We were told we weren't allowed to go eat places. We were told we were told all this shit, right? So I remember just not being afraid of like walking into places without a mask and just yeah. watching people freak or six feet apart my ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you know, like it just, just being myself and seeing how people just, you're not in line. You're not in the order of the way it's supposed to be going. Mm-hmm. Like, or just people driving or the best was that video. And I don't, not everybody saw it, but there was a girl in LA and she was walking her dog and, you know, she didn't know what to fuck. She didn't bring dog poop bags. So she took her mask off, picked the poop up, put it in the trash, and then looked around, <laughs> no turned way. it around the other way and put it on. <laughs> and I'm like that. I remember, I remember when that fucking video came out, I'm like, we have just like, this is a fucking <laughs> riot right now. We are on a planet that people are now not only afraid of dying, or a virus, or to lose their job, but they're afraid of being judged by not picking up the poop of a fucking dog while wearing a fucking mask, and they've so the, so they're gonna fucking pick up the poop with the fucking mask and then turn it around and then suck the fucking poop through the mask. That's bizarre. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because me and me and Leah were actually talking over the past <laughs> couple of weeks, you know, about and and it's funny because she she kind of sees eye to eye with me. It's like, well. 
honestly, you know, and Leah said this. She said, in a way, that would probably feel good to just go ahead and lose everything. We just have too much. We're not afraid of, of like, oh, you can't do this. You can't have this. Take it away. Fuck, who cares? We have so much. We've acquired so much, you know, and got so many bills going out. And just, you know, for your average household, our fucking monthly bills are, are astronomical for right. just a, a family, you know. So we were having that conversation like, you know what? I, I don't care if we have to lose everything right. and go start over from scratch. Who cares? You know, and I think that's that's where you want to be. If if anything, just don't be afraid. Like I tell my clients all the time who when I when I'm trying to explain emotional independence, I, I'm not saying go be alone. I'm saying don't live in the fear of being alone. Mm. You know, and, and it's a big difference. Yeah. And it's uh, emotional independence. The most emotionally independent people have the best relationships with everybody because they don't desperately need. Mm. And it's the same thing with this. It's like, I'm not, I'm not saying do this or don't do that. I'm saying don't live in the fear. One philosophy that I live by is if it's out of my control, it's part of the plan. Straight up. So if the universe puts me in a situation where it's like you either do something that you know is fucking wrong or lose everything. Well, I guess I'm losing everything then. The only way I can control that is if I get this shot in my arm, take it. I got a tent. I got an eight-person fucking tent. I'm good. Take it all. It isn't worth it, you know? So not living in that fear. If you can make it through 2024 and 2025 without living in fear, even if it looks like something horrible is happening, which... Maybe for some people it will, for some people it won't. Like I said, the universe is going to pick you up and carry you through it, and you'll make it through. I, I know it might sound so stupid, but I don't think anything's stupid anymore. But, like, I remember asking a girl to go to a dance, the fear that would build up. Yeah. I go a week, two weeks, fucking tripping the fuck out about rejection. And I remember I asked, and I got rejected. And so my great fear happened, but then it was like, Okay, well, at least that's over. And yeah. then that opened up to different situations and better situations and probably would have happened down that road. I know that might sound so stupid and basic, but that's exactly what life is. Is like, if you're so afraid of like something, just fucking face it, see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, so, so that's the other part of this equation is like, there's gonna be a lot of stuff we all have to face as a collective though. And instead of, let's just push it down the fucking just keep pushing in the closet and just keep closing it. I mean, I used to be one of those people, like people come over and I'd be like, well, I guess I'll put it under the rug <laughs> or fucking throw everything in my closet. It just closed. Look at the place is clean, but fucking you went in there. Blah! I used to be that when I was a fucking teenager and in my early twenties, you know, yeah. but you know, I know that that was in there and then I would get over it, but then eventually it would come where it'd be like, Oh shit. I gotta fucking, I'm going to fucking clean this. I'm going to face this shit now. I think we have a lot to face as a collective. We have to, a lot to face about. Uh, does anybody even know what really fucking happened over the last four years? No, there's no evidence about anything actually being true. There's no evidence about anything actually being fucking anything. And I think that's the crazy thing that's making people go crazy is like people, because there are no full facts on anything. They grip to an ideology that's usually pushed through some crazy narrative. That's why I think being an astrologer is great because I'm like, well, this is what the astrology says. And so people will like be like, how, how do you predict that? They're like, well, I mean, the astrology says that, but you know, like when people start being like, well, you know, I know somebody who told me this and did a blah, 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 and then blah, 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 blah. And so it's making everybody create their own realities already. So there's a bunch of people right now on the fucking collective just creating their own ideas and their own beliefs and their own philosophies and then the media and everything. And so what we're watching is just all these religious like cults of, of ideas going around. And there's no fact to what's true or not true, if COVID's real or not real, if the election was stolen, if it wasn't. Like all of it is fucking, no, there's no proof. There's proof that fucking people were fucking bow fucking do, chewing shit. There's proof that fucking people were doing shit. There's proof that there were people that were fucking double voting. There were proof that there were people that did want to vote for Biden. There's proof. That, so there's proof on all the sides. Mm -hmm. But no, the, the, the truth, <laughs> we don't know the fact. 
Everything is just sold to you as like, yeah, that's the truth. But then there's always all this counter energy that's coming to everybody. And that's what's going to be really, I think, the brain fry is that the next 20 years of Pluto Aquarius is going to be like, yeah, this shit's not going to be the way that uh, the world that you thought we lived in. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's a new earth that because people keep thinking it's like, well, are we like, is it a ride like a Disneyland? Like I go on small world after all. And I was like <laughs> in a line and now I'm in a little boat. And now all these things are singing at me and I'm in a new world now. It's like, no, it's more like the world that you were in was not actually the world you thought it was. Yeah. That's a new earth already. Oh my fucking God. You know, yeah. people, I think get a sad touch too much kind of like maybe, maybe, maybe cause we were all grown up to fucking an era of television and movies and cartoons. And you know, like they kind of create that idea of the cartoon where, you know, a whole new world 250 years ago with like America and the declaration of independence and the revolutionary war was like, well, there's no more King telling us what to do. And we could elect ourselves to rule this place. That's a new world. So there's lots of new earths that happen a lot. This isn't mm -hmm. new. It's just that there's fucking, well, we don't even know if that's a fact, but you know, there's supposedly right. There's 8 billion people here now. That makes it a fucking whole new world. 8 billion times over. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, that's what's kind of weird is like how many people want to push through because the whole idea of pushing through is like always when you think it's going to end of your fear or like my brother, he had to hold out, right? They, they were telling him like, if you don't get the shot in a week, we're going to lay you off. That same week is when the court overturned that whole OSHA uh. thing and all that. And then it was like, he was like, I knew it. And he only had one other guy. That was just like him holding out and every, all, everybody did it. And he, and they were just laughing at the end. Like hmm. all we had to do was just keep holding our. So if you don't know how to hold your own truth against any kind of fears that are pushed on you, because I think anything that's being pushed on you on a fear on a collective level, that's fucking bad. It's not, it's super easy. Now the positive of coming out of the hurricane. I love your description. And then coming into this eye has been like, it's pretty fucking easy to spot what is fucking coming after the collective or yourself as not fucking good. And that is manipulative and dark and not good. It's pretty easy to fucking be like, yeah, you know, it's like the smell test does not pass, you know, mm -hmm. like, and maybe that's why Joe Biden likes to sniff on every fucking person's hair. Cause he can't, uh -huh. he has a bad sniff reading on things. <laughs> I don't know, but that's the whole thing is like that. It's so easy to fucking see. So I don't think it's that hard, but it's so easy because boy, they're going to mess with those last subconscious, mm. you know, program things like the, the religious thing. We're seeing them yank right now that the fucking train has just done a little, dead, but they're going to start fucking doing the emergency break and fucking make it dead. And everybody go, Oh my God, the train is stopping. And then, you know, everybody's gonna be like, ah, and then you get in more into like, what is this place really? Yeah. What, who, what, what other beings are the governments in coalition with some sort of spiritual forces? Cause people forget in like 2018 and 2019 in Silicon Valley, they were doing microdosing, CEOs and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. On board meetings in Silicon Valley, the people who make your fucking apps and iPhones and all that shit to contact beings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. That's where microdosing started. And, and San Francisco has always been a place of that. Are the governments doing that too? And what, what bigger stuff do they have access to with all their CIA or the stuff that Timothy Leary helped bring out to the public with psilocybin to fucking LSD? Like what else is, go what, what coalitions are being made you know, I know that everybody believes now in flat earth or everybody believes that we never went to the fucking moon and all that. I think that there's a whole fucking other thing going on than we believe They're They are going into space. They are mining their stuff that they're getting, that they're hiding. Yeah. What better psyop than to kind of create a psyop, but really be doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like, like everything like I think that the conspiracy world has kind of done the whole, like they've bought into exactly what the psyop wanted. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and because then that means I'm over here really doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the, the, the crazy, if you really want to pull all the way back, the most convoluted part about it 
and this goes back to timelines is I like it how you said that. I don't, I don't know if you, if you thought about it this way, but there's no proof of anything. What's true. Is this true? No. Now here's the crazy part about it. All of it's true and none of it's true. Right. Now, how many people are on the planet? 8 billion people. So there's 8 billion different versions of the truth. And that's what timeline you're going to take. And understanding how that works, because this is a computer game. This is a, a, a light matrix that we live in that manifests out of the light realms. Like, no shit. Like I said, I learned it from a former NASA scientist. Right. It, everything manifests out of the light realms. The, the, you know how they ask the question, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? That's not the question to ask. The question to ask is, if nobody's around to see the tree fall, was there ever even a tree at all? Right. That's the question. No, there's not. It's not until, just like in a video game, until you look over here, there's nothing there. You know who's creating what's behind me right now? You are. Right. Well, and it's the same way with stars, right? We're watching stars that have already sent the light. Yeah. Yeah. So it already happened. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, you take 8 billion. I always, I always know there's, there's nine zeros in a million, right? Mm -hmm. There's 12 zeros in a billion. Or that's a, yeah, wait. I think, I think there's 12 zeros in a billion. If I'm correct. So you do eight and then the 12 zeros that equals 20 in my head. And Pyth in Pythagoras's time in Greek letters. And that's what I think is weird about the Q movement. I was talking about this. I had JK Ultron last week. Is like there is no Q in the Greek alphabet. There's no Q. But in the work I do with my hypergate and John D and all these old esoteric alchemists, is like 20 is Y, and that's the split. Y is the split. Mm. It's also where you get the hadrons to where you get the hadron colliders is through Y and the math of Y. Like if you never notice when they're doing the fucking crazy calculus and the crazy fucking wild math they're using letters they're using greek letters they're using the unicodes that are all based upon greek letters and the hadron and the fucking y is the split in john d and pythagoras the y goes back thousands of years in greek mythology of the understanding of there's the tyrants to god and the spiritual that go to god so the timeline is the tyrants that go, I don't, I'm not going to go with the natural way of, I'm going to fall. And, and, and John D puts it the best. The, the tyrant is the one that falls for the vice, ends up in the abyss, full of anxiety. And they don't realize that the anxiety is caused by the vices that they are going after. Mm -hmm. And that they, at, at the very end of that road is an abyss. So that timeline is just an empty void. Mm -hmm. The spiritual people go into knowledge right? They go into studying knowledge, but they, but they, but they, in many ways, understand the oneness of themselves and the universe. Mm -hmm. And that there's zero questions. There's no questioning that period. You don't question that. So that's why there is no cue. There's no question. Hmm. So that's the irony, right? There's no questions to life. It either, it, it is, you are one with the universe. Period. There's no questions to that. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody stuck in that questioning, mm -hmm. now you're in the vice of I need to go figure out the truth of if, if there is a one and if I am aligned as one with God in the universe. And that's go, going back in ancient. But I think it's really interesting that this whole Q thing is like, there's not even a letter for it. Are you into gematria at all? Uh, yeah. Um, now I'm horrible with numbers. Numbers have always been my weakness. Math has always been my weakness, but I am extremely fascinated with gematria and numerology. It's just that numbers, I, I'm, I'm horrible with them, but if I have a calculator, then yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm well, because it's that. interesting with the gematria, like they don't use the Greek letter system, right? They, 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 they use Hebrew they'll use some other systems. But to me, it's like, okay, so if like, let's say a saying and it enters, like it, it, it comes out to like 108 or something. Mm -hmm. Then they'll list, God, pages of things it could be. So it's like, 
Well, this turned into 108, and then they'll pick whatever out of all those fucking phrases that suits whatever they want in that moment. Yeah. Oh, that's the, there it is. Whereas, like, what I like about the, the ancients and using the Greek letter system is, like, you go, go look up the Greek alphabet sometime, and then go click on one of, like, alpha or omega or any of them, and then see how our whole entire matrix has been built upon those. So I think it's really interesting that the Gematria people are very kind of like shooting for it. Like, well, there it is, you know, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like if I was able to get through ancient texts to Hadrons to get to the understanding of why are they getting this collider and where they're getting CERN and, and how they got to that. And that to me is the other, well, when you say the eye of the storm, that's where these timelines, I feel like, you know, we are in a collective where we, I, I think we don't put enough emphasis on what's happening with the excess deaths, but I think the bigger ones are, what the fuck are we doing with fucking these massive colliders of atoms that are smashing into each other at astronomical rates and understanding the math behind it? Intentionally doing it, knowing to not use the full... So in my mind, it's kind of like they're smashing like a male and a male or a positive and a positive. Like, when are they gonna when are they gonna start smashing what they really want to smash into it itself? Oh, I'm sure they already have. Well, I feel like that I feel like they've been too afraid of the outcome. I and mean, I feel like at some point, the same way that people were, you know, I watched Oppenheimer recently, like, you know, at some point it's like, okay, you know, I understand the math, how to split an atom and create an atomic bomb. So they do it. I feel like 2024 is where, you know what? The world's going crazy. Maybe this will fix it. Beep. <laughs> Let's see. And I know people are worried about nuclear, but I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to another realm where they're like, could we just take a whole country and timeline it out? Yeah. Could, could we just put a collider in a fucking country and just fucking spin that thing up and take these fucking particles and fucking bop and bop. Bye bye. You're off the fucking timeline. You know, like that's how crazy some people are going. I mean, that's not even to mention the fucking genetic shifting or the pod babies they're trying to do. And that was another big article for new year's. Like you probably won't need to have sex, to have a baby anymore. I mean, they already have in vitro and they already have all this shit, but like oh, it's yeah. getting very, you know, Galica, like, you know, like, you know, they're, like, they're warming us up uh, you know, I yeah. mean, they, they've been playing around with this shit for so long. You know, they have full laboratories. Well, they got a whole damn base underground LA with fucking babies and test tubes and shit. This shit's been going on forever, but now they're warming us up to it. I think they're slowly dripping it. And, 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 and I, I believe that because. Even back way before I really knew anything about any conspiracies, a lot of the people that I would follow would say that the white hats then were telling them we can't come out and say it all at once, all the stuff, the, like the reality of all the shit that's going on. We have to slowly drip it out to the public. And I thought, are they really going to do that? And they've been doing it, slowly dripping it out. Like what you just said, that's just warming us up to the idea and and how long have they been talking about like ets now on the mainstream media nobody gives a fuck i i that's the one that to me like you know i'll be honest i, I could give a fuck about COVID. i didn't pay attention to it i didn't pay attention to the numbers i didn't give a fuck the fact to me, I watched X Files my whole life. I've always been interested in that shit. I, I, I'm like, we're fucking finally here. They're showing the military is admitting it's here. They're showing video, although the video is very questionable. But the idea that okay, we waited for this long, but I think there's a lot of people out there who are just like, I'm only going to follow what seems like concern to me in my life, like my family getting sick. I think that's what that's shown is like, like the people are more scared about the weather than they are a fucking other entity that could be. And to me, you know, anything UFO is probably more human and the dark fucking yeah. side and the dark government shit than 
I, I don't think aliens are bad. Cause I, I already know like if I was to go out, if I had the ability to go out, if I get a spaceship and shit, I'd be looking for the fucking party and other people would be like, what up motherfuckers? Like fucking like, you know, like I think that's a majority of the 8 billion people here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we're a reflection of as above, so below. And I feel like that's also the good forces that are around this whole universe and this whole multiverse. Yeah. I, but I, I just can't believe that we're at a place to where people are just like, I don't want to fucking see anything anymore. <laughs> I don't want to look at anything. I only want to look at what, unless Hillary Clinton told me or unless this person, like, it's like now it's become political people. Like unless that politician said it, then I'll look at it. My side's not on that side. So I'm not going to look at it. My side's about taking the shot, so I'm going to take the shot. My side's about not taking the shot, so I'm not going to take it. My side's about fucking UFOs. My side's about not looking into it. My side's about fucking this. My side's not about that. And it's like, the fuck? That, that, that's a new one, unless you go back to the Civil War. And that's what's weird, too, right? That we talked about that, the predictive programming they're doing with throwing out mm -hmm. in 2024, the biggest movie's going to be the Civil War. It's called Civil War, and it's American Civil War in the, in the, in the moment. Yeah what that would look like. And, and, and people are like, how could it be California and Texas? Well, 2024 is what you think won't be what, what you didn't think will be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the cool part is kind of like, wait, what? Like, you know, I think that there's more commonalities between Californians and Texans than you would think. Most people look at like life as like, no, only people from Tennessee and Texas are going to be more alike. But it's like, <laughs> no, people in Texas like big homes and they like to fucking have their pool in the backyard and they like to have all that shit. Same thing with fucking Californians, right? They, they like to have fun. They like to go to parties. They like to be on TV. They like to wear makeup. They like to wear fucking big hair. They like to get, you know, their hair blows out for the girls. The guys like to maybe drive trucks with fucking boots on. Guys in California like to drive trucks and cars just like fucking Texans, but just maybe in a different style, but there's the same thing. I think we have to start seeing that there's more similarities in what looks to be different. Yeah. And that's what's hard about a timeline shift is like, there's all these stigmas of like, no, you know, you can't be that because you're from here. To me, I feel like we always talk about East and West. I'm like, fucking, I bet you Africa is the best place to be. Fucking, they're in the middle and they're just fucking doing their own thing and nobody's fucking, any, and all, that's the one continent that has had the most uprisings since 2020 is Africa. The people there have overthrown their government. Fuck you, motherfuckers. Hmm. Right? The most, it's like seven countries have just said, fuck you, gotten rid of the government, did a coup, you're out, fuck you, and we're over it. We're over all this bullshit and you selling out to the fucking Westerners. Bye bye. And so the media does a report. Have you noticed there's nothing on Africa? You don't see nothing on Africa. Remember, everybody's like, go to Africa. We need to help the Africans. Yeah. When Africa starts uprising and taking out all the other governments, they're like, don't show Africa. Don't fucking go to Africa. Don't fucking talk about Africa. Nobody wants to help Africa anymore. Hmm. Everybody's like, oh, no. Have you noticed that? Who wants to help anybody anymore? Nobody's going like, I want to go help kids in Africa. Yeah. Everybody who wanted to go help <laughs> kids in Africa definitely was doing some shady ass shit. Mm -hmm. They were doing it for fucking clout yeah. or experimentation or even weirder shit or yeah. rubber or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, like I said, I, you'll take the timeline that you believe to be true. So I'm just laying this as foundation to what I'm about to say. Like I said, I've said this before, it, as soon as 2020 and all this started, I very carefully and intentionally hand selected the people in the truth community that I wanted to follow because I know what timeline I want to take. Because yeah. I know that if I follow somebody who pushes doom and gloom, I'm going to take a doom and gloom timeline. So I very carefully hand selected the truthers that I wanted to follow because I want to take the timeline that they're saying. So I'm on a timeline where in the next 10 years, there will be no governments. There will be no more presidents and prime ministers. Not like there are now. <clears throat> Not nearly like there are now. I mean, yeah, there, there might be like a couple of different people who kind of are there to, to make sure everything is okay. But as far as like, you know, there being special people that get put in an office that control everything and tell you how to spend your money and steal your money away from you, all that's going bye-bye. 
And that's the, 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 the new world that we're moving into is really going to start kicking off this year with the crash of the financial system. Because, you know, the, the whole, the old financial system of debt enslavement was created to do nothing but enslave you. And, yeah. and that's the system that's going bye-bye. And, and another thing that's going to go down with that is the governments and shit, because they're not going to be stealing your money. They're not going to be able to. The new, the new financial system that's going to be running is going to be run on a consciousness where you can't do anything shady with it. You can't steal it. You can't use it for child trafficking or drugs or, or anything shady like that. It's run on quantum consciousness. So, you know, that, that is going to be like the first domino that kicks off. In 10 years from now, everything that you or I have ever known about life on earth is going to be completely different. The financial system, the education system, the fucking voting system, the food and drug administration, big pharma. There ain't going to be no hospitals. And if you're sick, they give you this pill that makes it feel better, but doesn't fix the actual problem. Frequency healing and light healing is what's going to be in the future. Like oh, I said, yeah. I think I said this in another episode before. There's a lot of us. I bet you me and you are in that group who are going to live to be no less than 150 years old. Yeah, and actually there was just an article today about that, about really? how are we all prepared to be living to 100? Mm. And But where you're at with like, I think of like, you know, it might feel more like an HOA where there's like the president who's kind of a dick, like hey, don't put this in front of your yard. But the, what, the, what the difference is though is that people are going to be like, uh, we're all really annoyed that you're being a dickhead to us fucking and trying <laughs> yeah. to act like you fucking run this fucking place. Yeah. I want my fucking house purple. So fucking, and they want their house orange. So fucking, if you don't let us be purple and orange, we're all fucking going to kick you out. Okay. Guys, be fucking purple and orange. Yeah. Like, fucking, you know what I mean? Like everybody has been so not just the debt and the slave shit, but also just the fucking, you need to do this schools, mm -hmm. education, the financial, it reminds me of manifesting. Like if you're doing something manifesting good, guess what? The universe opens all the right doors. So this quantum understanding about consciousness and manifestation has already been fucking already going. It's the next level. It's the fucking quantum level of it, mm -hmm. right? Like when you start going down those roads and doing shady shit, which we'll just keep it on basic shady shit people can understand. Like, oh, I'm going to go fucking do drugs and fucking ruin my life. Look at it. When you try to keep manifesting when you're doing drugs, and shit, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I, we know from personal experience, everybody, anybody that knows, knows. It's not like, uh, that's why I always laughed when somebody's like, yeah, fucking, I'm a fucking successful drug dealer. <laughs> I, I, have you ever watched Blow? Have you ever watched fucking Casino? Have you ever, I could just go, I, just keep, you, I'll just keep going and keep going. Have you ever, like, it doesn't end well. It doesn't, doesn't end, end well. well. It doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. And everybody I've ever known, I've known friends that are in federal prison. I won't even call them friends. The people that I was acquaintances with growing up, right? And shit, fucking in my 20s and shit that I ran into and I knew them. And I was like, you're going to really go down that route and fucking boom, 25 years federal prison. Like, geez, you're a fucking idiot. So it's already been running. When you're doing something positive in your life, you naturally, the universe is going to open those doors, but you got to stay with that. And you got to be on, it's not the same as a fucking HOA telling you, you must clean up your trash and put your fucking trash cans out by this. And you can't have your garage door open for more than an hour. Like, it's not like that. It's not like God's doing that to you. It's more like, Hey, fucking just stay on track. It's more of like a fucking, Hey buddy, you got this energy. And when you're in that fucking Whatever, I think people get too obsessed with what that tangibly looks like as a physical thing in your hand. Yeah. Opposed to the magic in the way that the, 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 I don't even know how the fuck I got here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just kept, okay, I'm going to do things for the collective. I'm going to be selfless to fucking do selfless service. Fucking, I'm going to do something for something greater than myself. Knocking on doors. Yeah. 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 That's the, again, well, like what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, people get so hung up on how, you know? They, they get a vision in their mind. You know, I want to be, uh, I get this question all the time. How do I become a successful entrepreneur in the spiritual community? So, you know, they're, they're expecting a step-by-step -step guide. First you do this, then you do this, then you do this. Then, no, 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 no. Pick the thing that's closest to you and start doing it. Is it going to work out exactly the way you think it's going to work out? Probably not. There's going to be a lot of unexpected twists and turns. This is life in general. Going through 2024 is going to be like this. None of us know exactly what, when, where, how it's going to happen. 
But like I was saying in that video that I put on Instagram, the door popped open when I walked up to you that night, New Year's Eve, said, you want to work together? You said, yeah. Bam, the door popped open. I had no clue what the journey was going to be on the other side. A lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles, a lot of unexpected twists and turns because you can't get hung up on the how it's supposed to happen. It has to happen this way. If it doesn't happen this way, it's not happening right. No. When you pick a path and you walk down that path with nothing but trust in the universe, you have to trust that no matter what happens, it's part of the process. And, and, and holding that is what people fail to do, is being able to, for a year, two years, for a long, drawn-out, extended period of time, challenge after challenge, struggle after struggle, failure after failure. All right, universe, I'm trusting this is part of the process. Over and over and over, you know? And, and none of us have it all figured out. None of us really know exactly how we got here. We just picked a path. We started walking, and the universe guided us in the right direction and opened the doors that needed to be opened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I feel like – I love that you said this point because it's so important. My family came on the Oregon Trail a long time ago. I had, My family wrote the letters on the Oregon Trail, right? And my family's in the Oregon Trail fucking museum. Like, fucking – it's crazy. But I have the letters here. So I'm able to read. Like, my great-great-great-great-grandfather – he was afraid, of course, of being shot by Indians or by fucking people that would rob. A fucking gun went off in another fucking, uh, fucking wagon because, you know, the, the guns in the 1800s are fucking, <laughs> shit, fucking, they're rattling back there. If it's loaded, a gun fucking went off in another wagon and fucking hit him. Okay, nobody shot him, right? Or the best is like, they come to a river and it's like, okay, and, and the game is real. Forge the river or fucking take, if there happens to be somebody who can fucking float you across, right? They just happened to come to a river and fucking, they were about to go to where it was kind of shallow and there was a guy who was like, hey, I've got a fucking way for you guys to go here and it only cost you this much and I haven't had anybody around today so I'll give you a discount. That's going with the fucking flow and picking a path and being like, Fuck, I don't, you know, like, especially back, we have to get back to being on a quest. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you're on a quest, it's like, okay, we're going to, let's say, find an old relic. All right, but all that tour, like, an, oh my God, right? Like, I'm sorry, but like, it's not like you go, I'm packing a refrigerator on the back of my horse to have enough food to get there. <laughs> no, you're going to have to find food along the way. Uh, you're going to need to help. If you get, if you get fucking hit by fucking some fucking sword and you're fucking, ah, you're going to be like, I don't know what going to do. And that's going to be right when some fair maiden is going to be like, hold on a second. Let me, let me wrap that for you. Come into my hut for, you know, like what? Like that people are so afraid to live like that now. Mm -hmm. Although it's in our DNA, it's in our fucking human history. And I feel like that's where it's like, you could be living that now. You don't have to wait till we're, we, we just entered 2024, but you don't need to wait. You could already be living that way. That's where, to be honest, that's how you get to where you really want to go. Now, it's possible for fucking, I, my, one of my favorite movies is Close Encounters of the Third Kind because they're all having a fucking psychic hit to go to the same fucking place. They're drawing the fucking, you know, they're taking fucking mashed potatoes and making the same mountain, you know? Like, <laughs> like, like they're coming from all over the place and they get there and they fucking are talking through light and sound and then the government's like, oh my God, they're fucking coming out and they're like, yeah, we only want the people that we were calling to and they just get up on there and they fucking take off, right? I'm like, maybe that's fucking what the new earth is. It's just like, beep, it, it, up. We're all going to get a call in to go somewhere and we're going to be partying in some fucking weird desert and there comes a fucking UFO and fucking picks us all up and takes us to the new earth. I don't know. That, that would be a weird way, but I'm just saying that like, it could come any way, but it, the whole point is to be like, we're going to make it through and you have to be confident and positive and not be fucking in fear. And if that were to happen, if I was getting a hit that... It, or let's say my daughter, who's this new generation, and she starts fucking talking and starts saying all this crazy shit about, yeah, there's going to be an alien fucking spaceship that comes and fucking in the field over there. Da, 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 da. And I'm getting a fucking hit, and Sophia's getting a hit, and you're getting a hit, and all my friends are getting a hit, and my family. Okay, well, uh, you know what? That movie's like the time. That's the only movie where they're, everybody thinks they're crazy. They're the ones who go to the exact spot. And I feel like, you know, that movie is kind of, 
the best way to look at 2024 is like, we're all going to get the pings when it's necessary. Stop looking for them. Mm -hmm. That's what I think the negative dark side of the, the conspiracy Q community is like some of these people just fucking when's the next drop. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm fucking, yeah. what? can you be this patient in life and just wait for the pings of the universe to fucking ding, mm -hmm. ding. And the more that you're out of resistance because resistance creates friction, especially with frequency. And that creates static that creates fucking heat. That's not positive. That creates too much voltage. That creates too much fucking shock factor. And then there's the complete zero resistance where it, the, you're, you're just being blown by or passed yeah. through. So it's like just being engaged without being fucking obsessed. And with also, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. And, and I think that, that I know that might be hard to kind of like for some people to even understand, but it's I a think, relationship right? with the universe. Yeah. That's that, that what you're talking about right there is developing a relationship with the universe. You don't want to constantly be going against the flow and you don't want to be constantly just going with the flow. It's a back and forth relationship with the universe. So a question I get all the time is what am I supposed to do? What is my life purpose? You know, shit like that. So, so here's, I'm not going to tell you what you're supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you how to get on the path and figure it out. So, so like, say you're at a point in life where you just feel stuck, stagnant. You don't know what to do. <laughs> Knock on a door, metaphorically speaking. Start trying shit because I'm the firm believer that at any given time, I'm right where the universe wants me to be. Well, but I feel like I should be doing more, but I don't know what. Start trying shit. Yeah. Try something. See if the door opens. If it doesn't, walk down the metaphorical hall, knock on another door. See if it'll open. And if you just keep knocking and knocking and knocking and no door wants to open, it's like, okay, all right, I guess I'm where the universe wants me to be. Okay, that doesn't sit well with you, then get up and keep knocking, keep knocking, keep yeah. knocking. Just and 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 like I said, it's a real it's a back and forth relationship with the universe. So I know when to do just enough and then let go and let the universe do the rest. And it's, that's very idiosyncratic and very specific to each individual as to how to have that back and forth relationship with the universe. But again, most people are locked in that fear of what's going to happen if I try this. Now, people ask me all the time, am I on the right path? You can't take a wrong path. You can't. Right. You can start heading in the wrong direction because your life's journey is very much like the example I always give is it's, it's like a trip that you mapped out across the U.S. So before you were born, you say you, you mapped out a trip from L.A. to New York and you map the whole thing out. We almost never follow the exact plan to the T no. before we got here, but there's a general direction. Now you could start heading towards Florida. And then that's when the universe starts putting flashing signs up. Take the next exit. Take the next exit. You're going in the wrong direction, but it's not like there's a right path, a wrong path. There's no, if somebody walked up to you at the gas station and said, I'm on my way to New York. Am I on the right road? It doesn't really work that way. Every road no. in some way or another leads to New York. So very much in your life, it's very similar to that. You know, you can't take a wrong path, but you have to start moving because you ain't going to go nowhere sitting there with the car in park. No, you can actually fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do that in their garage and it doesn't end up too well. <laughs> uh, but I feel like you're right. There is no wrong road. I think it's more people trying to live the old road too much. Usually um, it kind of reminds me of like the high school fucking like, you know, um, like football star that still wants to be that oh, at fucking yes. 40. Oh um, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, like national lampoons, like, you know, vacation where it's just like how many fucking things go wrong and you're still trying to push to get to Wally world. And it's fucking closed. Of course it's fucking closed. The fucking universe gave you a fucking sign. The second that there was the wrong fucking car yeah. that you fucking took and bought. Like, you know, like, I mean, like, like, you know, like that whole movie is just like a basic understanding of like, yeah, everything goes fucking bad. Then her fucking mother-in-law dies. Fucking he puts her up on the fucking roof. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like the fucking dog, the fucking everything. And then he's chasing another fucking chick fucking while he's with his wife. Like that, that whole movie is fucking like where people are at that are fucking not awake. That whole movie. Like trying to get to Wally world, trying to get to their fucking Tinder date, trying to get to their fucking whatever. And fucking thinking that they're, they're, that's their solace or whatever. And the universe is like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. So to me, it's not, if you're not on the wrong road, it's like, are you on a road where the universe is green lights? And it's easy. It, it, there's always a green light. Mm -hmm. And then there's always a red light. And it's pretty easy to be like, why do people run red lights? I don't know. Of course, I think we've all ran a red light before. I like that analogy. Right? But why do people run that red lights? It's usually because we're not paying attention. It's not intentional. Unless you're really fucking like that late. But I don't know how you can be that late to run a red light. Yeah. Right? The only time I've run a red light was completely like not fucking paying attention. Like, what the fuck? I didn't see that. Oh, shit. Fuck. Woo. Sorry. And feeling bad for fucking a long time. But, you know, people, people that, in, I'm just going to run this red light because I want to go there. Bam, yeah, boom, bam, boom. You know, like, oh, well, I'm on the wrong road. And then unfortunately it starts, you know, and I think that the work you do with relationships, the work I do with relationships, others in this community, like, you know, our relationships are a big part of that. I mean, if, if, if you're with somebody as a friend, as a lover, as a whatever, and they're fucking a red light in your life constantly, mm -hmm. fucking what are you doing? And you can tell by whether you're up leveling in your life or not. Mm -hmm. Make sure keep keep that up. <laughs> but that, that 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 that's the. I think it's like pay attention to your basics first around you, and then that circle of influence starts growing and grow. It's like a tree. Every ring makes it so to where we know how many years it's been alive. And those trees are hundreds of years old. Those big sequoias, because they're fucking continually focused on what they need to do. And you, they, they, it's so crazy. The oldest trees, the biggest trees in the world are on the fucking ocean in the cold in the, in the cold in the winter. And then it's kind of warm in the summer. Like, you know, you would think that they'd be at the top of a mountain. No, there's not a lot of oxygen there. The most oxygen is right next to the ocean. And I've always thought of it kind of like, you know, sometimes we, it might not be just red lights or green lights, but like, if you're trailing and going to a place where you're segregating yourself to an avoid, where you already know it's going to feel like an empty fucking field or an emptiness, that'd be like a sequoia tree, like being like, yeah, I'm going to go survive in New York city. No, it ain't. It's going to be, it needs to be in Northern California by the ocean. Fucking the biggest trees in the fucking world are next to the fucking ocean. And they're just chilling there and they've been there through all this shit and they've, and they've seen it all. And they've seen the fucking Lewis and Clark climb. They've seen the fucking Indians. They've seen it. They just sat there and watched and just been like, eh, eh. but people just want to go. I don't know. A lot of people I feel like have been getting these, like, so there's callings from God. And I think this is a good way to kind of end the show is like, how do you know you're getting for you? And this is much more, I think psychic than maybe mind mastery, but I think there's a combo. For you, I want to know what's when you know the hits coming from spirit and it's like a fucking hell yes hunch or when you're creating a hunch that's not a hunch and it ends up to be a red light and then you're like, fuck. And do you keep going and do you, is that how you learn or I don't know? What's your way well, of I mean, knowing? That's kind of a convoluted answer to that question. I mean, whenever I start developing a weird unexplainable healthy obsession with something most of the time 90 95 percent of the time focus, like a focus yeah that's my guides like i said i started having these weird i started seeing this right in my mind and you know i was ne i've never ever been into podcasts and stuff like that i started seeing this in my mind me and you sitting talking into podcast mics before I knew anything about you, after you got that reading from me, that started shoving its way into my head, you know, and, and I, I wasn't 100% sure if it was a thing from spirit or not. But what I do is whenever I receive any kind of download, I try it. And if the door opens, cool, that was the universe. If it doesn't, then this is where it gets a little bit tricky because Everything in this life requires work and effort. Yeah. Everything that you do. 
So what's the difference between having to put forth more work and more effort and the universe putting a roadblock? Mm. This is where one of the ways that I gauge when the universe is telling me no, it's a red light. For example, my Camaro. Yeah. Perfect example. It's, it made no sense. Like the universe will start doing shit that makes no fucking sense. Like what, what in the world? My car is falling apart. It's five years old. This, this is having way too many problems for a five-year-old car with less than 50,000 miles on it. And it, they're all unrelated issues. It's not like, you know, you get a car that, oh, it keeps having fuel system problems. And every time I put a fuel pump on it, you know, no, it's, it's issue after issue all over the car. And then finally the transmission went out. And I'm like, okay, dude, I get it, universe. All right, because it didn't make no sense. The fuel system's going out, and then, and then you know, there's electronic shit going out inside of it. Then the transmission goes out. It made no sense. So, like, for me, and, and then, like, this year, the door opened to come, you know, move here to Southern California. It's been challenging, but it hasn't been roadblocks that make no sense. It's been challenges and struggles that I have to overcome, but I'm able to overcome them. So yeah. if you if you really, really dig at it and dig at it and work at it, if the universe is telling you no, it ain't happening. Like, it straight up ain't happening. You're going to backslide. You're going to slide downhill. Bad shit is going to keep happening worse and worse and worse. That makes no logical sense. But if I'm putting forth work and effort towards something and I'm able to overcome and able to overcome then does that, does that make sense at all the way I'm explaining it? No, it makes complete sense. I, I, I was asking too, cause you're, you're a projector, you know, and I feel like an Aquarius projector is one that like is going to have a very rare occurrence. That's going to come that you're going to be like, Oh, okay. This is different. And that you're going to pay attention to where I feel like Aquarius is know how to push away a lot of fucking frequency. Like, eh, nah, nah. Uh, and find the frequency that really aligns with what's going on. Whereas like a Leo, like me kind of is like, Oh, oh, they all, Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, fuck. You know? And so I've had to learn of like, well, you know, for, for, for doing readings for people, that's a different story. But I think it's when, when it's on ourselves, right? It's like, for me, it's like, you know, it's like, it's always the thing that like, you just, you just know, but you're just like, well, you actually kind of have a little self doubt with it. I think it's the stuff where you're overconfident. Like this is for sure going to be how it happens. And then it's yeah. like, ah, eh, 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 ah. there's, there's a little bit of self doubt. And I think that's good. I think there's a little bit of, because that's kind of like the brain kind of being like soul, your spirit. You're really bringing that to the soul. You're bringing the, oh, okay. Fuck. Right. I guess, I guess I better get prepared. Instead of like, oh, for sure, because the mind wants everything to be fucking easy and figured out and have all the ducks in a row and everything figured out. But I think that your analogy with the car is so, so good. That it's like, you know, people just like, it sucks because it sucks because it's usually something we're really attached to that when it just keeps going bad, 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 and it's not a good attachment. Whether it's a car, whether it's a relationship, whether it's anything, it's like, whether it's the fucking way the world's going right now, it's like, well, if it's such a bad fucking world and we all have an attachment to the world the way it was or is, I think it's more was, maybe it wasn't good and maybe the way that it is now isn't good. So maybe that means that, you know, we got we to gotta do it different now. And, and I think that's the positive of this new timeline is like, hey, it was great in the past. I've found greatness in the middle of it sucking lately. I think yeah. all of us have. Some people haven't, which I feel is sad. Well, yeah. But this can be fucking amazing. And I already feel like it's already aligned for being amazing. Yeah. And I think that's the big, weird, same kind of self question doubt that people are having. Like, could it really be that good? Because I think when people see timeline shifts and when they see the idea of like this really amazing timeline, everybody's having self-doubt, but we can see it. I've had visions of it. You've had visions. Everybody else has visions about it. So it means it's probably more true than untrue. And again, like you said earlier, there is no fucking, just as much as something is not true is the fact that something is true. So fucking we are at that point. And I think that, you know, the more that, you know, I think it's again, what side do you want to take? The, that that a beautiful timeline is true or do you want to take that it's not true and that's just going to be a fucking hell and i mean that i don't want to b 
be the judge of like the person's character that anybody could have that. But you know, like I, I feel like, you know, that's where it's like, you know, some people can always look at it as one version. Like, well, look at the climate or look at the health or look at the, this. And it's like, you're forgetting about all this over here and that over there. And it's an infinite fucking awesome universe. And fucking, we don't even know how we fucking got here. But I think we are going to get that dip of 2024 of like, this is not the way that like, every textbook will have to be changed. Every yep. idea that was, was once thought, every scientific revolution will look like nothing. And I think that's the exciting part. To me, I'm open to that. And I think that my final say on this whole subject of this, this for everybody this new year would be, be open to those awesome things that can happen opposed to afraid of what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Cause if you're going to be closed, then you're not going to get any access to any fucking badass shit. Yeah. And that's what they want. They want, they want to fucking scare the shit out of you with so much shit and scare you and scare you and scare you. I don't give a fuck if world war three happens. I'm going to have a fucking great time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. If anything gets fucking crazy, I'm going to fucking find my way through. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I like movies like Schindler's list, like Schindler figures it out and he actually goes and helps people. Like there's like, like in the middle of all the chaos, there's always a way to fucking get through and make it fucking great in the middle of it all. But I think, you know, unfortunately we see in history, people like to lump together in groups and go through the hell together. Like, you know what? My city's being bombed. I guess I'll sit here. <laughs> and that's where like, when you were talking about the backsliding, mm -hmm. That's where you either, if you got to dip out of the fucking car or the whatever, dip out of the situation, you dip out. Let go of whatever you're attached to. I mean, it's like Ferris Bueller's day off. Like, you know, he, his friend is so connected to that fucking Porsche, but it was his dad. And it was really not about the Porsche. It was about his dad caring more about a car than his own son. And fucking, he fucking just said, fuck it and let the car fucking go off. And it was because he fucking was like, you know what? I'm going to face my dad and I'm going to fucking deal. Like, you care more about this fucking car than me. That's what it was about. It wasn't about the fucking car. Mm -hmm. So I love that fucking movie. Cause it's like, you know, and Ferris at the same time, is kind of like, well, you know, it's kind of a weird movie cause he kind of doesn't give a fuck, but there is something about it that it's like, he lives a great life. He's going to fucking turn on the fucking, the, his tape of him snoring and have his whole fucking side move and the door opens and all that shit and fucking live a great life. Mm -hmm. Whereas fucking his buddy is just stressed over his dad fucking and what the car and we can't do this. I can't do that. And I have to be this way. And his dad, as you can tell it, that character is rich as fuck and has all the money in all the world. Whereas his fucking car is in a glass room looking at the fucking forest. Yet the most unhappiest people. Yeah. And Ferris Bueller is having a blast playing a tape. And, 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 and I think that's where creativity comes in. Like fucking, I love that movie. Cause it's like, Oh man, if I got the store or the, the fucking recording scene, like I uh, can't get to the phone right now, but, uh, or, or, Oh, I'm sick or all that shit. It's so fucking how to live like live your life more like that. I, you know what? I, I, I remember there was like the jerky boys. There was, all, I used to prank call with my buddies all the time when, when, when the fucking internet came out, and 56K, you could make phone calls on the internet and hide your number. I would fucking prank call all the fucking time. I had the best time ever. People don't have a good time anymore. It's because everybody's stuck you in know? survival. That's the thing. The world that we're moving into, first of all, to wrap this up, my final words are the world that we're moving into is nothing like the world we've been in. So there's nothing to be attached to. It'd be kind of like... Like, if you could, like, look back when everybody was riding around in horse and buggies and then the automobiles were coming, what good would that do you to be so attached to your horse and buggy? You know what I'm saying? Like, the no. world that, that we're moving into is so different that there's no point in being attached to anything. But I think, I think the, the most important thing is that the majority of the population is in survival mode. And we think that's normal. Like your average individual is enslaved by their own mind. They have no idea what their gifts are. They have no idea what their passions are because they don't have time to think about it because they're in survival mode. And that's the world that we're moving into. The debt enslavement and that old system is going bye-bye. So what will you do when 
all of your basic needs are met and you don't have to slave away and trade hours and days and weeks and months and years of your life, of your time, just so you can survive. What are you going to do when you don't have to do that anymore? You'll have no choice but to end up being drawn to something that you're passionate about. That's when, you know, your interests and your gifts and your passions will really come out whenever, you know, but, but you don't have to wait until it all crashes. You can choose to stop living in fear now. Like living in that fear and living in that survival mode is a choice. As much as it seems like you have to, you really don't have to. And yeah. and that's 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 what we're going to be moving into. And and yeah, and I love that you said that because I feel like a good gauge for somebody would be like, look at your Amazon. I think there's three things on Amazon. There's the essentials of like, hey, if you just move, right, you need to get some stuff for your house, and those things sell, and we all need those things. Then there's the fucking shit you don't fucking need. Which you see a lot of people fucking buy. I do that too. Well, I mean, we all do it, right? But like majority of the shit I buy on Amazon is for the stuff that is for creating stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Or like Sophia's the same way too. Like we're, we're always like, what? what like we're going to buy something like, okay, like what do, we, what do you need that's going to help you with your shit? And I'm going to buy this to help with this. And it's like, what? like the cool shit. And like you could see in Amazon, like, it's so weird. Like people are like, like enslaved in this world and they're like, a fr they'll go buy a fucking stupid ass fucking thing. Like the most <laughs> stupidest thing and spend all this fucking money on that and then be back into their slave life. And, and then that never made them happy. Yeah. Yet when they could be actually using their manifestation to whether, if we're going to use the old system that we're still in, that we're transitioning out of, why don't you go buy something that can get you out of your slave system? Yeah. And it's actually something that you will love. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be based off something you love, like something that you fucking love. I'm sorry to say I don't love like the, I don't even know. <laughs> like I'm trying to think of something stupid to buy, but there's so much stupid shit to oh, buy man, today. I, I mean, like, you know, stupid, shit. stupid yeah, shit. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like fucking, I really don't need a fucking, um, you know, a pen that fucking <laughs> comes in a fucking case to write i don't know but that would be writing but again i'm already thinking of something i would normally do but something yeah. that i don't know uh a fucking I, I, a samurai <laughs> sword letter oh. opener oh there you go i bought a samurai sword letter opener <laughs> i didn't fucking need that <laughs> how many letters are you opening? I, i'm guilty as hell when i didn't open a letter with it it's just a cool decoration to set up <laughs> yeah i'm guilty as hell when it comes to the stupid amazon buying so yeah yeah no i mean i think we all are but i think when you look at the majority of like what you yeah, get yeah. Yeah, it's I like it's like mean. it's like you know what i mean like it's like uh, like 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 sophia and i are buying baby shit because that's what's needed and then like if, if i'm buying something it's like okay stuff for the studio or earn i we're like, why go to Walgreens or anything to print pictures? Like, we're going to buy photo paper and fucking have a laser jet printer that fucking we can do it ourselves. It's so much cheaper mm. and buy frames and frame up our house and give frames to people, pictures with them at the roar. And like, you know, like there's ways to get out of this fucking weird shit by what you do right away with yourself. And I don't know, maybe that was a weird, stupid analogy to use, no, but, no. you know, I feel like there's... You need shit for your house. So that, that, that stuff's there. But I feel like when it's like, do I really need like that fifth of the same thing? Yeah. Do I really need the new Xbox? Yeah. Do I really, is that going to get me out unless I'm being a gamer? Which I have no problem. If somebody wants to make their life doing gaming, fuck yeah. But like, if, if that's not what you're fucking trying to get yourself out of and you're still in your slave feeling, well, don't go buy that. Like it's pretty fucking simple, but I, th I, I already know that, you know, some people could take it all the wrong way. Like, Oh, they can't imagine a world where we, you know, cause what would you do if you didn't have to worry about all that? For me, nothing would change. It would be the same. I'd, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's there. what it should be. It's like, you shouldn't, nothing would change. It'd be like, I'm still fucking driven to go do this. Cause some of us are already there. You know? Yeah. As far as the general population, your average person, if all of a sudden all of their basic needs were met. I got food, got a nice house to live in, nice car to drive, don't have to worry about gas, got electricity, and all those needs are met, the basic needs. What are you going to do with your time? Most people, I, I can, I'll predict what would happen to your average person. 
they're going to kick back and relax for about three or four months. Then they're going to start getting restless and they're going to start getting bored and they're going to start getting kind of depressed and they're going to start kind of feeling like life is a little bit pointless. Then they're going to start pulling their fucking hair out and going insane. And then somewhere around about a year, year and a half of getting depressed and going insane because they're not doing anything, they're going to start being like, man, I've, I've always wanted to learn how to fucking make candles or some shit like that, you know? Or I've always wanted to, I don't know, start a podcast on the internet. I've always wanted to figure out how to make goddamn lion statues out of clay or something. Their, their mind is going to be looking for something, and that's when their gifts are going to eventually end up emerging. See what I'm saying? Yeah, and I love that you said gifts because I feel like all of us, if we think of a new timeline, is realizing that we're all gifts to the universe. Yeah. And we're all gifts to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, the pandemic, pandemic was literally a test to see how many people would actually do something. They were given money. They were given their time off. And you know what they did? They went and alcoholism rose. More fights, more fucking chaos in people's homes than ever because they were... I'm just going to wait for the slavery to open back up instead of this is my moment to fucking try something new. The people who did, that's what was weird is like they were, they were, I watched a podcast recently with some, you know, psychologists that were like people that were doing good didn't feel bad. And I was like, yeah, I didn't feel bad putting out because I was doing the work that I was helping people like fucking why would I feel bad about being successful in the middle of a pandemic while you're sitting at home deciding to stay at home and not do anything? Yeah. If anything, I'd feel bad if I was in that position. Like I wasted all that time. That's a lot. So I feel like if we talk about timeline shifts, I think that the scariest timeline is to, to waste time and to not do anything. And that's a void. And there's a lot of voids, but I feel like there's so much being open is going to be key and, there's just so much. And I'm, I'm happy to be doing this with you and the, the new 2024 Awakening Experience podcast. And of course, we'll be out fucking in Texas for the fucking total solar eclipse that's going to X through fucking Austin. Yeah. Go to teamlight.com. Check it out. Tickets are still cheap. It's over halfway sold. So it's that almost sold out. Blew my mind here and there. I know. I couldn't believe it. It's going to be a big one. Shit. We'll be doing this show there. Rich and I are speaking, bunch of other awesome speakers. It's the, the tickets are cheap. I'm like, I don't know how Rion's doing it, but he's fucking doing it for the collective and for light workers. It's, it's really the light worker reunion to really move forward. And we got to do it in person together and do it with that eclipse. It's awesome. We'll be in Texas. We're going to be doing so much there. It's fucking crazy, but yeah. I also have to plug that I'm at Conscious Life Expo next uh, month. Make sure you get your tickets. Go to Conscious Life Expo or go on my link tree on Instagram or it's even here on my YouTube, my link tree. You'll see it, get tickets, click on my link for my lectures and my Monday workshop. And I'm doing the astrology panel and I'm DJing Friday and Saturday night. So I got a lot, but I, 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 I got, I have to promote it, but it's the biggest spiritual conference in the world. So that's next month. So get on it and discount rooms for uh, discount rooms are, are ending in like a week. So but I'm so stoked about where this show's gone and just that it was so fun today for you and I to fucking reimagine this. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's the same way as a new world. Reimagine your life. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you always got to switch shit up, man. Stuff starts getting stagnant. I did it at my house. I, I trade traded offices with my wife and completely rearranged my studio. Got my vibe back, you know, and, and you just, you have to do that from time to time, you know? Yeah. And I mean, for people out there, I mean, if you really, we started this show and we went since what? It was like April? Yeah. On doing a tarot card and just the understanding of that card, but then how it kind of acts in the world until we got to this moment where we were like, okay, now it's time to do the awakening experience. And and sometimes it takes time. And you know what? Him and I put in almost a year together every week to get to this place. So don't be so hard on yourself if on the first try you don't get where you want to go. Yeah. And for somebody like Rich and I, we were like, you know, well, let's do this right. And let's do it where, you know, let's do it till we feel like, all right, we've got the flow. We've got the thing down. And then even we shifted the set and shifted the vibe. And I'm stoked for 2024. I'm stoked to be with you in your life and your family and to be friends with you. And that was, it was over a year ago we met. And yeah, 
and and we still got amazing doors opening too straight so, up yeah so a lot of a lot of and if you are somebody out there on youtube and you and you have other people you want to collab with like go that's part of doing the collective work like rich and i have our own things but we come together to do this shit and fucking i don't know why there's all this competition shit in the spiritual community yeah, it's so stupid yeah ridiculous <laughs> i mean i mean it, it, it just everybody is just out for their own agenda like there's so many people and i can't like i said it was a bad move on my part lumping everybody into one category but i mean there are a lot of people in the spiritual community who just jumped on a, a niche just to get popular and famous yeah you know and and we're getting to a point now where you're gonna have to really start intuitively feeling out who's genuine and authentic and who's actually here sending a genuine message that'll help you. And the people who are just talking the cute, fluffy talk just to pander to the audience so that they can keep getting more followers and keep getting a fatter paycheck. And that's I all know. I really care about, you know? And, and I, like I said, I predict that most of, if not all of those people will fall off this year. Yeah. That's my prediction. Well, I mean, even like, you know, the algorithm is where people have to like actually search for people now that know what's going on. It's not like you just search for a term and then, Oh, look at that. You know, it's like people, you have to go find people now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that I think is a positive thing because it does kind of make it to where anybody who's kind of popping up kind of is the person that you're kind of like, why are they popping up? Yeah. You know? It's kind of inverse now. It's like the good stuff's the stuff that doesn't pop up right away. You know, I know you used to pop up and I used to pop up like first videos all the time. And then they definitely, once you do that, trust me, ever since this last four years, like, <laughs> I've been buried and dug up and buried and dug up right. so many times. It's crazy. Yeah. And you don't even pay attention to that anymore. You're just like, eh. Yeah, I don't look at numbers or anything like that at all. Anymore. No. I have no idea how many subscribers I have. I have no idea how many views my videos are getting. I don't fucking know. I don't care. That's not what this is about. Right. You know, now fucking 2024 is the time when we light workers are here to do our real job, not that earthly bullshit. I know. You know, I appreciate all my subscribers, so i uh, not saying nothing about that. Right, it's just right. that I'm not chasing a following. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm not just trying to make a bunch of money. If those things come along with it, that's cool, and I appreciate the blessing, but right. we got to fucking get our priorities in order. You know what I'm saying? I know. I feel you. Well, definitely the priorities are definitely here, and it's an exciting time, so... 2024 is here. We'll see you all on here. Definitely, we love it if you share these videos. Definitely go to teamlight.com. That's where you can get the tickets for what we're doing in Texas. It's going to be fucking awesome. They're super cheap. And if you want to be part of being literally under the fucking total eclipse, right where the X spot is. Yeah. Trust me, th these places have been booked for years. We're very blessed to be able to be you know, collabing with Team Light and all the other fucking awesome people there. And Rion and his team's been awesome. And we're st super stoked, you know. That's one thing about Rion. He's another guy that's been doing the work fucking forever. I've known him for fucking 10 years. And fucking, like, he just shows up every fucking week. Every, he never stops showing up. Just showing up. And, like, you know what? As a light worker, that's what it is. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. And, and you know what? I feel like 2024 is that year of, like, where blessings start coming in waves that we've never seen the opposite of like a hurricane, but the waves of, of, of frequency of, of, of connection of doors opening that are beyond our wildest dreams because you kept showing up and that's what you have to keep doing. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on others. Don't give up on the world and don't give up on anything beautiful and good. Absolutely. All right, everyone, much love. We'll see you on the next one. Please share this, follow us. And we also have a clips page now. You can go to the Awakening Experience clips page yes, yeah. on YouTube. And uh, we'll appreciate it. We'll be putting clips out. You can share with your friends and so forth. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace out. Yeah.